Welcome or welcome back to Watch Advice on YouTube. It's Alexander speaking, your host, and today I'm welcoming you from the Valle de Joux, to be precise, from Le Sentier. And where are we? It's written here behind. We are filming at Bulgari today, and the purpose of this video is to show you how these ultra, ultra, ultra thin watches are manufactured. Manufacturing a huge watch is much easier than a tiny one in sense of fin. Everything is different. The parts are extremely small and the purpose is to show you that even though the watch is fin, it is reliable, it does every normal thing you want to do with a watch. And we are going to show you how the moving parts are manufactured. We will show you how the base plates, the bridges are manufactured, how they are decorated. Then we will pass on and also show you how the movements are being assembled. The movements are assembled here in the Vallée de Joux at Bulgari. And tomorrow, that will be tomorrow, we are going to be at the headquarter in Neuchâtel. And at Neuchâtel, we will then show you how the movements are being assembled with the cases. And the case production, this will be later on. We will have the occasion to come back to Bulgari later on this year and to film the case production and the bracelet production. So you will see the entire process of manufacturing one of these wonderful Octo Finissimo watches. You know, every decade in the watch industry has an iconic design or brings out an iconic design. And I have to say, the decade actually is Octofinissimo because there is one iconic design and I don't see any other watch that has been produced recently that is so iconic as the Octofinissimo. The purpose of this video is to show you more about the insights and the background, how these watches are manufactured. So enjoy, lots to discover, have fun. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell to get our latest notifications. Yeah, everything is a little bit different here at Bulgari. I'm wearing blue, not white today, so you see me in different colors. And we are at a place where they stock the base materials, things they need to manufacture the movements. And everything is a little bit smaller. Why? Because our intention today is to show you how these ultra-thin movements are manufactured at Bulgari. So you have brass, it's written here, Messing in German or in French, Leton. You have steel, you have uh, silver alloys, different alloys, but everything is so small. I was amazed when I saw this stock and I said, hey, um, is this really it? Yeah, it has to be because the, the parts we are going to show you later in the video, they are so small that it's sometimes incredible. You don't see them. You need glasses or a magnifying glass to see parts they're using in their movement. So here is one of the stocks um, where they uh, have the base materials they use uh, to manufacture their movements and yeah. It's small. <laughs> so the French word décortage stands for cutting out and this is done with automatic late machines and we are just going to show you them when we are entering the atelier. So the base materials we just showed you are being loaded here and the machine automatically advances the material and in this section the cutout is done. Here we have a little tray where we can show you what these machines do and especially how tiny all the parts are since we are always talking about the ultra thin movements of the Octo Finissimo range of Bulgari. So what you see now on your screen is a machine that will do some surface treatment of course on the pieces that are cut out from the late machines, you want them to look good and here it is done automatically. The robot arm brings the piece that should be treated. It is turned around once to make those wheels and little tiny parts look as you expect them to look in your Bulgari watch. So that's not a film roll you might uh, probably think of, that's uh, sandpaper. So it's automatically being moved forward and the used sandpaper comes out at the other end and it's here and you can see 
it's a very fine sandpaper. And you can see the traces here where they have been uh, yeah, treating the surface of the little wheels you saw in there. So once again, you see here the base material. We showed you the stock in the beginning of the video and all the parts you see here that are manufactured out of the automatic late machines are moving parts of a movement, but the sizes are incredible. This, for instance, is a barrel. If you turn it around, you can clearly see where the mainspring later will be hold in and we have been positioning some coins this is one euro two francs and ten centimes so you can get a relationship to sizes and let me take this ten centime coin here and put it here this is a pinion I hardly can identify what the pinion is uh, supposed to do what he can do this is a super tiny pinion that is also part of the ultra finissimo movement, end of the day. And I will just move on the 10 centime or one euro so you get a bit of a relation. Can you see these tiny parts? They are all cut out here. Incredible small and what's different to all the other things is that we are really working in a microcosmos. This is also the complexity of manufacturing such movements is that everything is pretty small, pretty fragile and you have to think different. It's much easier and much more convenient for everybody working on it to manufacture bigger movements than smaller. Believe me, without the pinion, the movement wouldn't tick. It wouldn't show time. I just took one of the pinions and I, I positioned it beside of the barrel I showed you in the beginning here. And you can already see the difference in between the barrel and the pinion here. That's it's incredible. And the barrel already is pretty small because normally in a movement you will see much bigger ones. And yeah, it's a microcosmos. Octo finissimo is the world of miniaturization. <laughs> Literally miniaturization. It's incredible what they're doing. I have immense respect of the watchmakers and everyone working with these parts later on. It's not only manufacturing them, it's handling them every day. Ooh. In difference to what you are going to see next, all the parts on the tray are moving parts, meaning parts that are turning in a movement. So the machinery here in this atelier, the late machinery, is definitely manufacturing moving parts. And next will be bridges, base plates, etc. non-moving parts. This is going to be next. As I just said before, we are now in the atelier where they manufacture all parts that are not moving in a movement. <laughs> so those parts will then take all the other parts that are moving and in a kind of a sandwich construction, there will be a movement end of the day. This is where they start off, kind of a brass uh, piece. Already now you see that the base plate is much thinner than the ones you used to see or you uh, probably have seen in other videos. And then the brass piece will be put in the latest generation of manufacturing machinery that makes a base plate. And some of you who might have also seen the video of Panerai recently on our channel might recognize uh, this latest generation of machinery because it is different to the generation before because what is moving in here is the base plate and not the tooling. So by moving the base plate around and having the tooling machinery fixed on one location, you avoid moving of weight and you move the most light part of it, that's the base plate and not the machinery. So this is first of all more effective, it is um, also conserving energy and it is the latest generation of machinery you have. There's tooling station, the robot will charge the tooling it needs and then just manufacture the plate and the plate will be turned around in the two positions and all the parts you then later need to fill in the moving parts will be cut out and uh, terminated. Incredible, we saw them at Panerai, I know that Rolex uses them and other brands. It is the new generation of machines and let me show you another piece I have in my hands because what you see here is the manufacturing of a bridge of the Calibre 138. So you see here this is more or less the, the raw material, as we saw. And here is one of the bridges that comes out after manufacturing here. So what happens basically? You make a base plate, you cut out all 
the space and all, yeah, exactly the space you need to integrate the moving parts and then bridges are put on it and it's kind of a big sandwich that is manufactured. <laughs> It, it, it sounds funny, but it is a kind of a sandwich that is manufactured. And end of the day, yeah, will um, integrate, the sandwich will hold and integrate all the necessary parts from the energy source, that's the barrel with the mainspring, with the main gear train, the escapement, that will end of the day make a watch tick and show the time. This what looks like an art installation here is, of course, not an art installation, but finished uh, so-called Pont de Rouage in French, uh, the bridge that holds the main gear train of a watch. In this case, it is the Caliber 138 of Bulgari, the automatic movement that is used in the Octo Finissimo. And I will shake it again a little because I, I just found it so funny when everything here is moving. Look, oh, oh. Ooh, I love it. So to show you the difference in between the new generation of machines and the old generation, here is the example. The base plate or whatever you want to machine in there is positioned and fixed, doesn't move. But what moves is the entire tooling. And this huge motor, this engine is, is heavy and you have to move it to then machine the piece. And this is the main difference in between what we have seen before. The main plate or the piece you want to machine is moving and the heavy part of the entire thing the engine and the tooling is fixed so you will see the machine running here and then you can clearly i think clearly see the difference the entire big block you see is a motor an electric motor and it is the entire thing that is moving and the base plates are fixed it is the old generation old don't misunderstand old here it is just a development that is done actually in the industry and I think it's good to show you this that not only technical innovations are done with movements but also in terms of the machinery they need to manufacture these movements. So what happens here is uh, electric discharge or wire cutting, if you want to name it that way. So what happens is these are little plates that have been pre-machined just in the atelier beside. They are parts of the chronograph. So the holes have been machined just in the other atelier. But then when it comes to cut out the piece, this block of 18 blades is being mounted in water, a wire comes in and with a strong electric field, the part is precisely cut out. So we just saw the wire has been positioned. Now the operator is flooding everything with water and then he will do some checks and launch another operation. When you are manufacturing such tiny parts, wire cutting is essential. First of all, brings out the part in a very precise way. So we are talking about microns here. And the treatment of the machined piece afterwards is less than if you would do it with CNC machines or other machinery. So it is really an advantage using it and mostly being used to manufacture very small components you need for a movement. Well, after the wire has done his job, this is what you see or what you get. A bigger part uh, being used in a chronograph. It's a command that will, when you push on it, adjust the second time zone in the chronograph. In command de pascule, as you say in French. And there is here, you can see a little, little five microns part that keeps this um, command still in the plate. And they teach me how to now um, do the operation, I have to push here softly and I'm doing this. It's the first time I'm doing it, so please forgive me if it's not perfect, but I have to push here and um, then the part comes out. Yeah, here it is. It is done the way as I showed it, so it is really uh, being pushed with a piece of, piece of wood. I can try another one, maybe I'm um, better in the second, um, yeah, you push here and you see 
You continue to push, you turn it around. Yeah, and there it is. And this is how they separate the machine pieces from the plates. And once again, this is a part of the chronograph of the Octofinissimo chronograph. You push with a push piece that is outside on the case, and this command then will transform your move in the movement and advance the setting of the GMT in the chronograph. Haute orangerie parts are, of course, also part of what Bulgari is manufacturing in different movements. So we are now in the department where they do decorate the parts and the base plates, etc., etc. We will not show you every detail of decoration because I think you have seen that. What you see actually on the screen is the hand beveling of a tourbillon cage that has to be done by hand because no machinery not yet developed, maybe in uh, the future, can do what the operator here is doing by hand. It is something you learn over years. You have to clearly say if uh, the operator will overdo it on a certain place or in a certain angle. The tourbillon cage was a tourbillon cage because yeah, you can't use it anymore. It's a delicate process, a delicate work. I often say this, there are lots of things uh, that are underestimated in the manufacturing and movement. Decoration is one of it. And also something that will not be part of this series of video uh, with Bulgari, but we will have the chance to see that in another edition or another series. We will film the case manufacturing and those who polish the cases. This looks so easy, but isn't easy because it's really a job you learn for three years. And after three years of learning, you are like a beginner still. You have to do your own experiences. These are the famous Geneva stripes, or oh, Côte de Genève. It's a decoration of a bridge, a bridge that belongs to the Calibre 138, the automatic Calibre of the Octofinissimo. And yeah, all the parts are decorated, of course. A well-known process because Côte de Genève is being applied on lots of uh, Swiss-made watches. Of course, there are other brands using more technical decorations. That's also an approach. But Bulgari stays pretty traditional by uh, still using these old, old, they are not old, they are, they, are, they are there, these traditional decorations. The things we have to say is that the process you see here now is semi-automated, so parts of the work is done by the machine, but still there is an operator controlling everything because uh, the eye sees more than the machine, and if something isn't the way it's supposed to be, he can intervene before it is too late. But uh, in earlier times, the pushing around from left to right was done manually. And uh, there was a very delicate process because if the operator would have done any error, the piece would have to be eliminated or taken out of production. And losing a ready to be assembled part of a movement, that's tough. He's now checking. Yep, he likes it or he seems to like it. Here's a tray uh, with an assortment of different parts of a movement that have been treated. Surface treatment has been done. Basically, you see that Bulgari doesn't assemble any parts that haven't been treated. It's a variety of skeletonized movements, base plates, automatic rotors, wheels, oh, all different parts you can see here that are decorated bridges, of course, we've just seen how the Geneva waves have been applied on a bridge. It was the Calibre 138. It is traditional watchmaking, and in traditional watchmaking, the pieces are, or the parts of a movement are decorated. All the parts of a movement are decorated. Just to make it clear, because this is a video about manufacturing Octo Finissimo, the ultra fin movements. Of course, you see parts on the tray that do not belong to the Octo Finissimo series. So, in case you have been recognizing them and you think now that the guy talking to you is uh, yeah, not absolutely correct in what he's saying, yes, I know, but it is an assortment of different parts of a movement 
they decorate in this atelier here where we actually are, and this is the Atelier de la Décoration. Few watches have made it to the iconic status, and most, if not all watches but Octo, made it in the 20th century. Uh, and most of them in the 60s and 70s, which have been overly credited. So Octo Finissimo is somehow the first and only icon of the 21st century, which is quite uh, interesting. And it's a different icon from the 20th century uh, in the sense that uh, it has three dimensions, and this is probably explaining why it has been so quick to become an icon when the icons of the 20th century, we all know by art because they are obvious, uh, have mostly one dimension, which is design. So, I mean, if you take each and every single icon, which we all acknowledge from the 20th century, they're an icon primarily because there was a great design and then over the years it evolved, but this is it. Octofissimo, obviously, has started with the design. I mean, the octagonal design, which was inspired by Roman sellings, is pretty unique, very strong, the 110 angles also uh, make it a cutting edge watch. But it has two other dimensions, which I think explain also why, how fast. The second dimension is uh, the look. This monochromatic choice we made with titanium case, bracelet, and dial, which provide it with the look, which together with the shapes, make it immediately recognizable at 10 meters. And, all world record, I mean the seven plus one we mentioned, I have in common to have that uh, look uh, made of the octagon plus the monochromatic. And the third dimension, which uh, no icon had before, is, I mean, uh, those world records, that is technology, futuristic technology. And so combining futuristic technology together with monochromatic titanium, together with octagonal shape, has made uh, Octo a three-dimensional icon compared to, I would say, uh, mono-dimensional icons from the 20th century. Mm -hmm.